What's up, everybody? We're here in Miami at Cardone Enterprises, going to meet man, 10X man himself, Grant Cardone. Let's go inside. What you wearing today? What you wearing? Right now? Let me know what you wear. Grant, thank you for being open to talk about the watches. So I yeah. always just kind of, yeah. I, there's people I follow, and whenever I see watches come up, I'm always yeah. looking for that commonality with people. Mm -hmm. So I was quick to kind of reach out and wanted to kind of just talk about your watch collection because yeah, yeah. you got some interesting stuff here, so thanks for doing it. And nobody's ever asked me to do this, so so I'm excited because a little bit different, huh? it's a little relieving from, from just talking money and sales and, and business and 10X and everything. Yeah, so for maybe people, because there might be people that are watching, yeah. um, I maybe speak to you, like, you know, who's Grant Cardone? Because yeah. you've, you've kind of evolved a little bit. Yeah, so yeah. Maybe well, now, 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 now I'm a watch, now I'm a watch collector now. Yeah, now watch. I'm a watch collector. <laughs> Um, so, you know, uh, elevator pitch, I, you know, I got, uh, I'm, a, I'm a kind of a self-made guy, I didn't, I didn't, be, being that I got a lot of people around me, I got a great team around me, but started with nothing. Um, look, didn't buy my first watch until I was 40, 40 years old. Like, did, would not spend any money. I'm cheap. Uh, that's one thing people need to know about me. Like, like I'm extremely, extremely conservative around money. Uh, I've done a great job with money. And uh, coming from nothing at 25, I was broke, $40,000 in debt, uh, raised by a single mother, Lake Charles, Louisiana, a little refinery town where you either do hard labor or you probably don't work. Mm -hmm. And I, I wasn't really good at hard labor. So I don't mind working hard, but I just wasn't good at the refinery stuff. You know, I, I had a job one summer pushing coal through a pipe this big, and you had to use like 600 pounds of pressure with water and you'd push it through this long tube. I mean, this tube was massive. I mean, it was hard work. Come back, you're black, you know, at night from the cold popping back on you. So that's kind of how I grew up. And then uh, today we have uh, 14 little departments or divisions that, that probably are encapsulated in seven companies and some partnerships. We'll do about 150 million bucks this year. And, awesome. and I own a bunch of real estate, so I'm, I'm more passionate about real estate than I am watches. I would, I would get rid of my, I would get rid of my whole watch collection well, we'll, we'll for, for one more real estate deal. We'll so we'll talk about that. But, all yeah. right. So it sounds like you have an unconventional path towards watches compared to most people. I, I know people that watch my content are crazy enthusiasts. Yeah, they yeah, love yeah, watches, yeah. But yeah. Maybe talk about you know what got you into watching the first place. Talk about forty years old is when you yeah. I think. Like, I, so what, what was it? What was the it? first then, watch? Did you ever I, were interested in them beforehand or what? No, no, not really. No, I've never read the magazines. Okay, I didn't. I didn't have a European car until I was mid forties. Like again, I'm extremely conservative with money. Like so, so it, it really, really that's code for terrified. I was terrified because I grew up poor. So. No, not poor. We had we had food, right? When I say poor, I mean people that don't have anything. But we had a we had food, but we had fear. Fear came with the money, the little bit of money my mom had. So we, we weren't thinking about luxury items, dude. We were thinking about okay, are we all right? Yeah. And so <clears throat> any of this stuff, dude, I can't like I couldn't even imagine it. Um, like ne I never read the magazines. Okay, that 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 was not me. I didn't do the Rob report. I didn't read. Every once in a while, I'd see these the yacht magazine or the car magazine. I didn't. I, again, I didn't have any of this stuff until my mid forties. I had money. So what got? So what was the first watch? What, so what, the what first got, watch. Let me see. The first what watch kind of was. Uh, I think it's in this box right here. Let's see. So they gave me this watch. Okay. Yeah. This is the first watch I ever had. Yeah. So this is stainless steel oh, date just Rolex, right? Two tone. Dude, this was the first, I I first did, watch I had, and I watch I had everyone too. I didn't. I didn't have another watch for uh, probably ten years. Like, I, I probably bought this when I was thirty-eight. Maybe, maybe not my mid forties. And I bought it used. I think I paid eight hundred bucks for that watch. Eight hundred bucks. I've it's never sold a watch that I had. It's probably it'll probably go for like. Three, four thousand now. Yeah, oh man, I mean, they, the they just gonna keep wow. going. There you go, man. Big yeah. money. Just so, <laughs> so I gave this to my wife. Uh, I, my next watch after this would be a, I don't have it anymore, would be the Yacht Master in gold. One, white, white face. Yacht Master 2? Yacht Master uh, I, I don't yeah, remember. Okay. Uh, I gave that to a partner. Nice gift. Yeah, nice gift. And let me see, what was the other watch I gave away? I gave away another watch. The guy, that guy left me. Shouldn't have given him that watch. He never liked the watch. I think it was a Panerai, actually. But yeah, this was my first watch. Why did I get into it? Dude, I have no idea. I think I was trying to be a, you know, I was selling cars at the time. And everybody in the car business, anybody that made it kind of had a Rolex. Uh -huh. So I thought I was a big shot. 800 bucks, maybe. 
it's crazy compared to where they're going at now. All the Rolexes are just all inflated, the prices. So they when, they when, seem cheap to the Richards and Paddocks. And, yeah, you know, that's, that's true, and we'll get to the Paddocks in a yeah, second. Yeah. So, I mean, let's just open up the watch yeah, box sure, a little sure, bit and sure, just kind of sure, see what sure, we got sure, here. Sure, so, sure. Looking at your collection, yeah, you definitely have a certain style about you, and a couple inches. It's in changing thing. though. I'm it's evolving. I'm evolving. And you have I, you have some kind of unique pieces. Yeah, along yeah, with, yeah. Uh, thank, you know, the major you, brands. Thank we see you, the Panerai. We see yeah. the APs. Uh, we see, of course, you blow. Yeah. So, well, so because about, yeah, yeah, yeah. on your wrist too. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so what's your style? What do you what do you look for in a watch? What's dude, your brand? Dude, what's dude, I, let me just tell you, I, all these watches have stories for me, right? They're, they're, it's not about the watch or the value or anything. Yep. Now, now, then, then I went to this trend of I love the big stuff, right? The sports watches. So this Panerai, this classic brown band. Uh, I mean, it's not fancy. Yeah, Stain no, it's, stainless it's steel. Again, again, this this watch was not expensive. I think this was thirty five hundred bucks or something, maybe. Um, compared to that white gold, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, big so down, this yeah. is this is cheap grant out. You know, I'm like, I want to. I need something on my arm this big, but I don't want to spend any money. Then there's, I, I bought this in La Jolla, California. Uh, How do you buy your watches? You buy them all in person? I dude, dude most of, most of them I buy them online, okay? Buy them online. Most of the time I see something, I see it, I do zero research. You see? <laughs> zero, none. So do you see it on somebody else's wrist and you're like, I gotta have that? No, no. Typically what happens is I see it. I see it somewhere online or I see it in a mag or, um, uh, I, I might see it in a store like this way. It, it could be it's random, bro. It's like yeah. like I was in the I was in the uh, the Bal Harbor Ublo store. Walk past it. We were eating dinner. Uh -huh. Walk past the store. Retail still works. And this watch was there. And I'm like, I fucking love this watch. Okay, this watch is sick. Okay, there's there's only 25 of these made in the world. A, a real watch enthusiast be like, yeah, it's just a big clunky watch, right? But there's only 25 of these. It's Russian. It was a Ru mate, it's a Russian uh, whatever. They, they got the whole the Russian seal, thing. The the back, Russian yeah. So, so when I saw this watch, I'm like, I'm buying that watch no matter what. I don't care if it drops in value. It's worth five grand one day. It doesn't matter to me if it's worth 50 cents. Like I love the watch. And then I t told the guy, I said, let me think about it. Called him back that night. I said, I want that watch. He's like, it's gone. I said, oh my god, You've gotta be kidding. So I said, can you find me one? I started looking all over the net for it. Could not find one anywhere in the world. And I don't know if you can get that, Johnny, but um, still one of my favorite watches. Oh, my wife, my, wife had, my yeah. wife had bought it. That's she bought it. Me. She bought it for me and gave it to me for my birthday. So. Oh, that's great. But, but I had to suffer for like 30 days. So, <laughs> so I love that watch. Um, then, then I bought this watch. I bought another Hublot. I went on an Hublot spree, you know. Which, you know, these watches have all dropped in value. So all you guys that are out there like, oh, watches are always worth more money. No, most of them are not most worth of them, more. Honestly, probably two brands. Rolex, Patek are the only ones. There's only certain yeah, models yeah, yeah. that like, retain their value. Yeah, and they're saying Richard's going to always be worth more money. But if anything takes a bath, Richard would take the bath. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, honestly, that might be a good, we can talk, we can talk a little yeah. bit about that. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I mean, just talking about just the value of these things. Because I know yeah, you're, you're there, there's no value cool. in these watches. Yeah. I mean, if you want something to be worth more money, I mean, even art. Like who sells their art? Like yeah, it's not, you know, don't 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 make sense of it. Like oh, it's going to be worth more money one day. Just make sense of it because you love it, you know. Like so, this watch was, uh, I mean, this watch, this is Spirit, you yeah. know, Ublo Spirit. Yeah. Uh, it, it's not a popular watch. You don't see it a lot, but I liked it, right? And that's all that mattered. I did not wear this watch for one year. I bought it, put it in a box, and did not pick it up for another year. And one day, one day it called me and says, you must wear me today. Today is the day. And then I put it on, dude, and I fell in love with this watch. Okay, so I still love it today. So I, I think that's the important thing is that, you know, stay and fall in love with it, stay in love with it. Now, I'm gonna show you one of my favorite watches, all right? Let's see it. Like, like, and look, look, look what they did it's on the back. It's got that interesting I mean, oval. Look, the, 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 the band says AP back here. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, dude, it's just, talk about unbelievable workmanship. To me, that about a watch, Looks good on you, dude. Let that's me see. Kind of, that's kind of cool. I kind of like that. Dude, it looks actually. great on you. You know, it's easy to read. I love that watch. How'd you get this one? What'd you do for this? I was in Aruba. I, I was in that's Aruba. Not one, that's not I was in Aruba, dude. I was on a I was on a ship doing a sales conference, and pulled into Aruba. Got off. I was looking for cigars. Saw this, and and bought this. So, but I negotiate like a fool, dude. Like like. <laughs> 
Uh, you're not a good negotiator when it comes to watches? No, 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 I did. Oh, you're, oh, you're no, good? No, no, okay. I, I, yeah, I was going to say, so, come on. So wait, let, me, let me just finish this. My, probably one of my favorite watches, I saw this uh, in a magazine, went online, bought it from a guy online, AP, um, on one of the brown band. AP is oh, one sorry. of my favorite yeah. watches. I think this is one of the classic. But, but the whole space is so screwed up. This watch right uh -huh. here, you never see this watch anywhere. Um, some people will think this is an ugly watch. I went on a Frank Mueller. Is that is that Roger? That's Roger. That's Roger. Yep. Yeah. So that's a freak watch. You know, it's a, I mean, it's a massive, massive uh, face, right? So what else I got in there? Did I cover everything? Yeah. We got. This, we got to talk about tax. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. These. These. So oh, this watch. Let me tell the story about this watch. Okay, yeah, this sure, watch. Sure. I bought this watch. Saw it online. Went online. Started searching people. Found this guy in L.A. I was living in Los Angeles at the time. And so I'm like, oh, this is gonna be a great dive watch. And guy comes to my house. I don't know who the dude is. I'm paying him in cash. I think it's, I don't know, at the time, 10 or 11 grand. And packing a piece. I just had a new baby in my house. I'm like, oh my God, who is this dude, you know? Anyway, you never see this watch anywhere. You ever seen I'm it? Not, I've never seen it. Yeah, big Panerai. Love Chron Chronograph, 1,000 meters, that's... Yeah, so I can go, I can't live that deep. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll die, can. but the watch will keep going, right? I lost that watch for seven years. So I've been looking for that watch. Twice a year, I would start looking for the watch. I know I didn't lose the watch, okay? We had moved from LA to Miami, and I'm like, it must be in storage, it's some in, some back. I knew for sure I didn't lose it. And I mean, I just knew intuitively I didn't lose it, even after looking seven years. I've looked 15 or 16 times for this watch. Maybe three weeks, four weeks ago, I opened this bag. There's 20 grand in the bag and the watch. I find 20 bucks and I'm looking for something. Dude, uh, that's dude, a good day so for me. I, I, I didn't even know I lost the 20 grand. I lost the damn watch. I, I, I threw the 20 grand on the floor. I'm like, I got my watch back. <laughs> so, okay, let's talk about the big yeah, boys, we, we got, right? We talk okay, you want, you want to go yeah, there, I wanna, right? yeah, we got So, it. Kayla was involved in this, all right? So, I, I, I swore, no more watches, I'm done, right? And I go in this, I get this paddock bug. So, this got delivered, okay? Uh, this was what, six weeks ago, maybe, maybe two months ago. So, it's a brand new. What is that? That's a fifty-nine eighty. Fifty-nine eighty. Um, I mean, it's gorgeous. That's, that's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, that, that, and that's my favorite. Well, but what I wanted, what I wanted was the white gold. So I bought this one. This is a great tip for salespeople. Okay, like once a guy does the first thing, particularly if somebody's being cheap, and they're if they're cheap and qualified. You can be cheap and qualified. A lot of very qualified people can be cheap in a moment. So I know you're looking at this whole collection you're like, dude, you're not cheap. Yeah, but but kind of you can have that mentality, right? I bought this watch. 24 hours later, I bought this watch. <laughs> so, right, Kayla? It had to be within 24 hours. Both these watches showed up in, in three days. So this is, you want to tell the story yeah, of this? That's 5976. Yeah. Uh, that is a 40th year anniversary. White gold, blue face. It's, it's heavy. The camera's not gonna get that across, but it is a heavy watch. Uh -huh. It's substantial. This is a bad watch. Price-wise, that's probably the most This watch too. today is 400 grand online. I'm, I'm, I mean, if you can, they, if you can they, get they, re they retail around 300. It's a Lamborghini, sure. it's a Lamborghini Omar. <laughs> it's a Rolls Royce. That's where you wore in today too, wasn't it? Yeah. It just came back from- uh, Just came back. So there's a whole yeah, yeah, story yeah, on this watch. That. Talk about that. So like, like um, let's see what I got in here. This watch that I have, oh, I love this watch. This watch that I have on, the first time I took it overseas, I was in this much water in the ocean. Kayla was there, jo uh, Jared, was, who, who was there, uh, Ryan. I had finished, I was in Dubai, uh, right there at the, what, what was the name of that hotel? The bird, yeah, I'm, I'm right there, I'm at the beach, I'm looking at the, oh my God, it's beautiful. First break I've had in like a week. I go lay in the ocean. I can I'm serious. I, if I was in a foot and a half of water, I, I'd be shocked. I get out of the ocean. I look down at my watch. It took water on. So the crown must have been open. I don't know what it is. <laughs> this watch turned green, okay? There was water, like, I've never seen water penetrate a watch so fast. All these watches, that none of them have ever been wet. Uh -huh. And uh, so we sent it back and the guys fixed it, so. You sent it back to Patek? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's the only way to really do it. 
Yeah, yeah. Man. So it's fixed. Now one more watch. Yeah, one more watch. And then, and then, and then. I like that court case. That's cool. Okay, this watch is one of my favorites. I, how many favorites do I have? See, I love all these watches. <laughs> That's the important thing, about it. You, you, know? gotta, you gotta love what you own. You gotta love what you yeah, own. Yeah. So they're kind of like children. This watch, <laughs> this watch is. Um, I've never seen anybody with this watch. Roger Dubuis. Skeleton. Excalibur, flying skeleton. You know this. Yeah, you, you yeah, know, yeah. You know all these. See, I don't know anything. <laughs> I just know I like the watch, right? So let me see if I do can. Do you still have the Chrono Swiss? I saw you had yeah, a Yeah, 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 I do have a Chrono Swiss. In fact, I took a picture of it oh, today. Yeah. You know that watch? Yes. And I don't know if you know about this about that watch, but that watch, from the enthusiast point of view, is uh -huh. actually a really big deal. Oh, yeah? That's the first skeletonized chronograph. They were the first one to ever do that. Wow. So, I mean, they're, they're a nice, respectable, yeah, I bought, that's a very obscure model. I, that's a I, bought, very obscure I bought this watch in um, Geneva. That makes sense. I was in Switzerland when I bought this watch. There's probably three authorized dealers to replace so you can buy that in America. So wow. I'd be very surprised if you bought wow. it anywhere else. So this kind of reminds me of that, okay? But this is really, really light. Um, that's kind of more in line of this this new this new thing that everybody's doing is with that, the, Is that like a carbon fiber? Wow, that's incredibly yeah. light. Isn't that awesome, dude? Now, I never get a comment on that watch. Nobody ever says, wow, that's awesome. So, you know, you'll hear, you'll, you'll hear, you'll get comments. I get comments about this watch, um, probably the AP, the paddocks. I mean, people could comment about those, but some of the right, watches. This wasn't the Turbion, but this is, this is crazy light though. Yeah, some of, the, some of the watches I have will never get a like. Like nobody ever is gonna say anything about them. Yeah. I get more likes in my Instagram post. <laughs> but you know, again, it doesn't matter. Like it, what, what matters is whether the person owning the watch. So let's talk about, yeah. we talked a little bit about investments and yeah. you know, talking about you know, value. So there's a video Kevin O'Leary did. He talked about watches as investments. Yeah. And he talked about six models that, yes, they do retain their value, um, but the idea of watches and investments. What is your idea? What's your thought on that? It's completely ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, Elaborate. Yeah. Like, I mean, anybody, anybody thinking about you're, you're going to buy a watch because it's going to be worth more money in the future is like, mm -hmm. I mean, it would be worth more than the money you paid. But like, like, you know, this Hublot, somebody's like, oh, that was a terrible investment. Well, I'm not selling it. So it's not, it's not, first of all, how did I pay for it? Where did the money come from? So I would never use earned income to pay for this. I would only use passive income to pay for any of this. So and when I get enough passive income that I, I have a surplus of passive income beyond anything that I can live on, then I'm like, okay, I'll do a cop car. I'll do, I'll do anything that could go down in value. But the cash I paid for this, let's say this watch was 50. Let's say it's worth 10 grand today. I don't know. It's worth more than 10, but let's say it was worth only 10. It's still going to be worth more than the paper I used, right? Because mm -hmm. the paper's worth nothing. Yeah. And the paper just, you need, the paper's only worth something if you use it. And so, you know, but I would tell Kevin, whatever, dude, collect as many watches as you want. Like you're gonna die and you're gonna pass them on to who? They're gonna get rid of them. They're not gonna keep them. That, this box doesn't buy food. Mm -hmm. Like you got an emergency, you need fuel. You, you, you know, you're not trading the watch. For sure, I totally agree. And if you do, they're not gonna pay you anything. But so yeah, I would only pay for this stuff out of out of. Uh, I would never pay for this stuff out of earned income. Okay? Mm -hmm. Like this is a little stainless steel. This is what people shouldn't buy though. Like this kind of stuff's never going to be worth anything. Yeah. But it looks good. Yeah. You know. But yeah. don't don't people shouldn't de deceive themselves. Like Richard, okay. Uh huh. Like how how is that stuff ever going to be worth anything? Talk about Richard Miller. But. Yeah yeah. So so th those watches. As much as I love them, like I want to buy one right now. There's one I want to buy right now for three forty-five, but it's just ridiculous, dude. The 1103 mm -hmm. in blue, that that crazy blue they got out yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. But I, I but I know there's a good chance I'd lose three hundred grand on that watch. Yeah, I mean they're and, and hard, they, 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 they just gonna, how those are going to either appreciate or depreciate compared to other brands. I mean, well, the the yeah. moment the rappers move on, the moment the athletes <laughs> and the rappers move on. If they move on back to if they move back to Rolex, mm -hmm. Richard is done. Yeah. There's not one. Um, Those are the best brand ambassadors for a lot of these brands. I don't think they even realize a lot of them even realize what they're actually what's happening. Oh my in, god. Like in pop culture with like you know the rapper is just mentioning it. I think that's yeah. probably the number one catalyst for a lot of their marketing, and they don't even realize it. And they, staying relevant like, 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 digitally. Like, totally. Like. You know, James Harding where you know buys a buys a yeah. Richard, wears it, somebody snaps a so, shot, so used it on Instagram. Like Odell Beckham Jr. I mean I'm a Browns fan. I saw yeah. he's wearing a Richard Mill. Yeah. 
and the practice, the practice yeah. field at, yeah. uh, at training yeah. camp. For Floyd's got a green, the green yeah. Richard, you know. So, so, but look, you know, I mean, as long as that's going on, um, but what, what, it's all hype. There's no materials. There's no gold. There's no. There. What? What are they even made of? Bottom carbon fiber. And yeah. I mean, some of our precious metal as yeah. well. It, it, oh, it is. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. I didn't know there was some. Some. some of, I mean, it's, it's a lot of mixing of different materials yeah, for a yeah, lot of them. Yeah. But but all that being said, you'll probably see me wearing one one day. <laughs> <laughs> it's stupid, man. So so talking a little bit. I mean, you're, you're a guy that made a career in sales. Yeah. Um, and hearing how you specifically buy watches is interesting. So. Just a little bit how watches and how they're sold. I mean, it's traditionally brick and mortar, especially for these high-end pieces. If you, let's just say hypothetically, you're you're the maybe the CEO of yeah. I mean, Hublot. Uh huh. What would you do? Would you change anything? How would you start selling watches? Is there anything that you would do? Like, I mean, like, what would you do? The, 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 the store, the stores, the stores don't work. I mean, they're 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 going to dump all their stores. So the stores don't work um, because I was in Singapore. I walked into a Hublot store and a paddock store, and a Richard store. They can't, they don't have any inventory. I go on the internet and I say, Richard, boom. I got the whole world, you can't, you can't compete. So, but the, the, that, that, that space on the internet compared to that retail store in Singapore, the, the, there, there's no way, they, they, have, they, they had eight watches, maybe 10 watches at max in, in that paddock store. They had two people and a security person in the store. They got electricity going on. They, they got overhead. Is it, they had one person. I walked in. Uh, I make my round and I leave. They don't know how to handle me. They don't know how to manage me. They don't know how to collect my data. So like if you're not going to teach and train people how to actually engage a customer um, in that Singapore mall, then you need to abandon all the retail stores. Except for maybe flagship boutique stores, which is probably what they're going to do. You know, major flagship yeah, stores. Owned by the manufacturer. But then you have to you have to have inventory, mm -hmm. and and you know, Paddock's going to sell a watch for eighty grand. It's going to go into the open market if it's a hot watch. If it's something like this, the next thing you know, it's going to be two hundred because the guys the guys out on the periphery mm -hmm. are going to be selling that watch and picking up that two hundred grand. Mm -hmm. So the boutiques are done. I mean, it's just not it's not going to happen. Now that being said, like. That that watch was bought in a in a store uh, 15 years ago before the internet yeah, was in totally full different book. time. This was bought in a, a Aruba uh, 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 because of tourism. Okay, this watch was bought out of a store. I called the guy and just said, "Do you have it?" But I saw it online. Mm -hmm. He delivered it to me. I negotiated with him. Um, the rest of these watches were bought online. That's interesting because I think looking at this, I mean, you're, you're an authorized dealer is kind of like wet dream in terms of like a guy that would just kind of go in and like, yeah, like, yeah, in 24 hour period, two protects. Like, I mean, that's crazy, it, right? It, it, now, it ne ne neither, neither one of these came from Paddock. There you go. So this watch is crazy. This watch is what? Um, if this was their 40 year anniversary, how old was this watch? That'd be uh, 2016. You can't buy this watch yeah. out of a store, right? Yeah, so yeah, they're, yeah. they're all in the open market. Some guy bought this watch, kept it new, sealed the whole deal and he, he played the investment and, and I'm, that's not the game I'm playing. Yeah. So, um, and then, and then it's like, it's like, it's gotta be the right moment for a guy spending this much money on the watch. It's gotta be some stupid second in time that you're depending on for, for me to get ready to buy this watch. And you couldn't miss the moment where this is out of fashion. There's a good chance this watch won't be worth what I paid for. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely a reality. Happen. So, all right. So, you're, you know, business guy. We got we got to talk a little bit about business. Yeah, I sure. Mean, I, I think, I think, cool thing about watches is it's a very aspirational pursuit, just like life and business in general. Um, you know, as you know, income goes up, you have you know, you know, bigger goals. And I think watches is just that. There's pretty much a watch for every tier of success. So, what would you say to somebody that's you know maybe trying to increase their income, maybe they're an entrepreneur, or a salesperson, for example, that you know wants to potentially get to a level in which they want to buy it. You know, a nice luxury watch. For one, how much money, like in yeah. terms of that passive, you talk about passive income. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What position do you need to be in? And then also, what are the practices that you need to maybe go about in just your everyday life to yeah. buy yourself this I, I think that most, of the, it's a great question. I think most people that are doing the, the, that are buying watches are buying it before they should be buying them. Mm -hmm. You know, the, 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 you shouldn't be, you should never buy a fake watch, Johnny, ever. You should never wear a fake that. watch. Yeah. Because all you're doing is you're pretending something prematurely. You're, tri you're, you're, you're lying to yourself. The whole world will lie to you. You don't need to stand in line and lie to yourself too. So number one, I would tell you people are doing it prematurely. And 
you should number two, never, never, ever buy it out of earned income, ever. So if I go earn a hundred grand, yeah, 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 earn, earn, earned yeah, income, I, I, I make sixty grand a year. I pay the government twenty thousand. I have forty. I have forty left over to live on. You would never ever pay it out of that. So you, that, that's what I mean is premature. It's, it's premature money, right? So let's say the guy's making two hundred grand a year. Mm -hmm. he, he works for Facebook. He makes two fifty in Silicon Valley. He still doesn't have any money left over. Just because you make two fifty doesn't mean you should be doing this. When you should do this is when. The money that you're earning, you have enough earned income to make an investment, a real investment, not this stuff. Investments that pay you money, okay? Mm -hmm. So my, my, my policy is I'm never gonna buy a watch out of earned income. So if I make a million dollars, pay the government 400, I got 600,000 left over. So let's say I can live on the 600, I, I got 100,000 expenses, I got 500,000 left over. I would not buy a watch out of that first 500. Hmm. Take the 500, put it in an investment, Let's say the 500 grand pays me 50,000 a year. Now I can go buy a $50,000 watch. Yep. Only buy the, the watch from passive income. Now I'm like, hey, I could buy, I could buy this out of the passive income. I could buy definitely buy that. I could buy this. Mm -hmm. I could buy this. And I could go get five watches. But you should wait. Like I'd, I'd rather, I'm gonna wait. I'm not gonna spend money. I want money making me money. And the money, the, 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 the money, when money gets pregnant and has babies, the babies, the baby, the baby Benjis <laughs> can buy me Richard. Yeah. So I'll buy Richard when my apartments kick off 340000 to me, in addition to whatever I thought they were going to do. When I had this big bang and three forty comes in one week and I'm like, okay, that was all passive. It's not taxed the same way earned income is. I did not have to trade time for that money. Then I'm gonna call somebody up and say, I got 340, this is what I want. Get it to me in the next fucking 24 hours, I'm gonna change my mind. Cause I'm gonna, it's totally impulsive and it's completely ridiculous. And it's not based on sanity. Hmm. No, this, is, this, is, this is insane. I mean, there's nothing and, insane about no, it. No, no, and, 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 and then the it's other emotional. goal, totally. And the other goal should be the 340 that's coming in. Yeah. I should, some more of that should be coming in. This shouldn't be a, this shouldn't be a one-time thing. That, that passive income should keep coming in. So this is just one of those trade-offs. And I think that that would really put, put a lot of discipline financially on somebody to say, okay, this is when I'm ready to start doing this stupid stuff. <laughs> but because people don't have those policies, this is why the athletes end up broke, mm -hmm. you know? And, you know, James Harding's not gonna, he's not gonna, they're not gonna pay him $10 million forever. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the Floyds and the, 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 you know, this is why guys go broke. Yeah. You know, you know, I was with Mike Tyson, you know, my, my, Mike had $800 million. Like he had, he had, he had, he's on top of the world. Dude, what if he, what yeah, if he nice. did, if he had never spent his earned income, taking all that money, not bought watches, cars, giving it away to hoes, whatever else he did. Right. And he just took that money and just reinvested it in something that was indestructible. Like the apartments that I do. Mm -hmm. You can't, you can't wipe them off the, the, the planet. Like they just can't go away. And then he just had earned income coming in from that 800 million. He'd be earning like 50 million mm -hmm. passive income a year. Then you can do it like, yeah, I'll take one of those. Give me one of those. Cause it's going to keep coming in year after year. And he would never go broke. Hmm. I like that layering, yeah. kind of layering of the investments. Yeah. So uh, just for people that maybe want to you know, learn more about you, you know, what's going on in Grant Cardone's life right now? Where can people find you? What, any, uh, well, I'm anything? trying to take a break on watches. Cause, okay. cause, yeah, yeah, that's all right, just in general. Uh, you know, uh, we, just finished, we just finished a nine country tour. Uh, I did nine countries in 34 days. So we're taking the 10X thing around the world. Uh, I just finished doing a conference here in Miami, 35,000 people, largest entrepreneur conference that's ever Mar held. Mar Mar Marlin Stadium, Marlin right? Stadium. Yeah. Book the entire you stadium. Guys, out. Can you skydive in and then yeah, start yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> conspiracies out there that says it wasn't you. Well, you know, only I know. Dude. <laughs> only I know. Like, like I know this. My ankle, my ankle still banged up. So <laughs> that's what I do know. Um, yeah. So, so the ten X thing. We're getting ready to do a boot camp. Uh, three times a year, we do this big boot camp where mm -hmm. three or four hundred people come in and we spend three days on their sales processes, their business, their expansion. Just started two new companies, uh, an advertising company with Frank Kern called CardoneKern.com cool. and a, a venture company where we're starting to invest in other companies. And so like a company like yours, we, we would come in and say, hey, let, let us help you go from where you are to 10 times that. And then we get a piece for that. Let's do it. Yeah, you like that idea? So, 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 so you know, like, like we got companies that are like, dude, I'm at, I'm at 18 million bucks. 
I've been at 18 million for the last three or four years. I can't grow it. Yeah. They need help, right? And, 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 and that company should be making 100 million. So we would come in and say, okay, we're gonna help you get the, the lift to get the other $80 million. It's there for most companies. Yeah. So what do I have going on? I don't know, a lot of, a lot, a lot lot of things, lot of right? Going on. I'm awesome. about to do a gig in Arizona, Phoenix in a, in a week or two. I'll go do a deal with Damon John up in New York. Uh, Toronto, I'm doing a deal. San Paulo, Australia, Philippines. A lot of stuff gonna happen. That's awesome. So, I mean, I know you said you're gonna take a little bit of a break from watches, but you have you have an eye on anything? Anything? Richard, I got a, I got I got my eye on eleven oh three. I think okay. it's an eleven oh three. All right, yeah. Richard Mill. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that, I think that fits for what you got. Yeah, yeah but dude, they're they're so big. That's the yeah, problem yeah. I have. You know. Yeah. They're so big and gawky. You got you got to get a GMT. You're traveling way too much. You got to get a GMT. I agree watch. with that. I agree with that. Yeah. I I actually tried to buy another paddock, but 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 it came here, but the face was too small. It'd be great on you. Yeah, I got a small little wrist here. It, it was just, I just didn't love it. It, it, it was the international, the world, uh, the, world, world, timer, yeah. the world time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Love that watch. That's cool. I just wish the face was bigger, <laughs> you know, because I liked how flat it was. Yeah, no, those, I mean, they're deceivingly thin. Yeah, yeah. Especially for what's inside those things. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. But Grant, this is great, man. It's awesome, Dude, it's awesome to meet man. you. Thank Appreciate you, you coming down to do this. this. this what are you buying? What are you buying next? What am I buying next? Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to. Right now, I'm, I'm selling a little bit. I, I mean, we're well, just if right I was going to give you, if I was going to give you one of these, which one would you take? Oh, thank I'd you love, very, I'd thank love, you very much, sir. I'd love your viewers. Maybe, maybe scan the whole box. I'd love you guys to comment if this is going to go on YouTube. Oh, it is, yeah, for sure. What would you take if I was going to give one of these watches away? That's which one would you take? That, that'll, that'll, that'll get a lot of, that'll get a lot of. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's that, that watch is beautiful. That, that's, that's I right wish there. this, I wish this watch, I wish the face was blacker. You, know, you see how off to the side it goes brown? Yeah, it's like almost like a gradient yeah, yeah, uh, kind exactly, of uh, exactly. paint. Yeah. And I think they even call it the, the, the black gradient. It's a beautiful watch, though. That's, that's killer. Yeah, so yeah. let me know. Let me know. Hey, let me know. Comments. Which one Leave would you comments. guys take? Okay, Johnny, get a good scan of the whole box. What would you take if I was giving away these watches? So, Grant, thanks again, man. Thank you, dude. Thank you. Appreciate you, appreciate you guys. All right. All right.